Grade 8 math number 4.1a represent linear relationships using tables. We can use an equation to describe the relationship between two amounts, and we can use a table to show some values that make the equation true. In the last few videos, we've used the equation y equals kx, where k represented that constant of proportionality, that constant unmoving ratio. We saw the x value as input and the y value as output, and k was the rule we followed to fill out a table of values for x and y, and we can plot the points for the values on a graph. And the equation can be written with a coefficient for x and with addition and subtraction. You remember what a coefficient is, right? It's the number that's in front of the variable that we're going to multiply. So it could be written as y equals x plus 1 with addition, or y equals 6x with just a coefficient, or it could be written with a coefficient and addition or a coefficient and subtraction. See? So let's take a look at this first one. Emma bought a tomato plant that was 10 centimeters tall, and each day it grew 2 centimeters. We can represent this as y equals 2x plus 10. The 2 is the 2 centimeters, x is each day, and the 10 is the 10 centimeters it was when she first purchased it. We can show its growth over a period of 4 days with this table. The number of days is x and the height is y. That's the output, that's the input. So in one day it grew two centimeters because it grows two centimeters each day. You add that to its original height of 10 centimeters when she bought it and at the end of the first day it's now 12 centimeters. And the second day it grew another two centimeters. So now that was two times two is four plus the ten. And then the third day it was three times that 2 plus the 10, and now it's 16. And the fourth day, it's 4 times 2 plus 10 is 18. See? So each day it grew 2 centimeters, and we added that to the original 10 centimeters of its original height, and we got new values for y. See? We can fill out the table vertically also, which is how they do in high school and college. Okay? So Look at it this way. Here's another one. Bob pays $50 each month for cable TV. Well, he can also purchase individual movies for $5 each, like new releases, that are added to his cable bill. Well, his parents aren't thrilled about him doing that, and they tell him, you know, don't rent these movies, just wait for them to come out on cable, because that could be expensive. But if he did, Y would equal the amount that was due for the cable bill, $5, is how much each individual movie purchase for the new releases are. X is how many movies he purchased. And then the $50 is that regular base monthly fee. So depending on whether he purchases individual movies or not, or how many he purchases, his monthly cable bill may vary. So X is the individual movies purchased. Y is what his monthly cable bill is going to be. If he purchases zero movies, his bill is going to be $50. See? We can look at this equation. If he purchases one movie, it's now his bill is now going to be $55. If he buys two movies, it's going to be $60. Three movies, it's going to be $65. And four movies, his bill is now going to be $70. See? We can write it vertically for our x and y table and see we have the same figures. It's just going vertically instead of horizontally. See? So now you can see how we can represent linear relationships using tables. Okay? We're going to continue on and we're going to keep discussing this topic and we're going to do it using graphs in the next video. Okay? I'm going to show you how to actually plot these points. Alright? Don't forget to hit the like button if I've been helpful. Don't forget I'm on Patreon.com if you want to become a monthly supporter. And don't forget, I can post any of these whiteboards on Twitter to help you as a study guide. You can print or save them. See you next video. Bye.